Can you believe someone threw this away? Let's take the covers off. I regret everything. 200 gigabytes of footage for a 10 minute video. All right, I regret nothing. Hello, new storage server. Okay, it doesn't have any RAM and there's holes in the front and the back and it doesn't have a side panel, but we do get a genuine tough power power supply, the independent voltage output. I was more after the hard drive mounting. This computer does not work, but it got me thinking. I've had pretty good luck finding big computers like this that could fit lots of hard drives in them. Other example, of course, being the $10 computer. The problem with these systems is they're always really old and slower than I'd want even for a network attached storage. But the other thing I've been able to find in my area, I did have to pay for these ones, but like $50? for a decommissioned office PC, these actually have good processors in them. But then these have a different problem. Whenever I can find these, they're always in this form factor, or even worse, this form factor, which, yeah, this pile of hard drives is bigger than both of these combined. The obvious solution then, we need to take our good, fast computer parts and put them in the case that actually fits hard drives. Except, I don't think it's going to be as simple as it sounds. There's a lot of little things happening with these OEM systems. For example, uh, I don't know, the power supply is a completely different, incompatible size. I think it'll be an interesting process. Let's tear down this computer. I know Thermaltake is a pretty recognizable brand, but something about this power supply, it just seems like I shouldn't trust it. I'd also like to know why all the fans are mounted with just twist ties. And then there's actual like corrosion and rust in the bottom. Was this sitting outside or something? That's my best guess. Oh, I almost forgot about this random board with like a composite video plug. What could this possibly have been for? None of this computer works, but I do kind of want to see what CPU is in here. I know it's AMD, but what is this chip? AMD Athlon 64X2, dated 2005. Now that's an old one. I do wonder why this doesn't turn on. Obviously there's no RAM in it. I tried putting RAM in it. I wonder if the CPU works or if the motherboard's just dead. There goes the card reader and here's our blank slate. Now it's time for the good computer. There's so much density going on in these small computers. They're kind of beautiful inside, but at the same time, a lot less useful because of it. We'll put that graphics card aside. We might want to use that. And now we can get a look at the biggest source of problems for this build. This very not regular ATX power supply. Maybe this size is standard somewhere. I don't know, but I do know that this plug is going to prevent us from plugging in a regular power supply. At least for now. I've got an idea. There must be a screw underneath the CPU cooler. That's my only guess as to why this won't come out. Oh, no, this is bad. The motherboard is out, but I'm noticing more and more things that are going to be problems for this build. Number one, the CPU cooler is mounted to this, which this is not going to be in that computer. And then this is the plug for front panel stuff like, I don't know, the power button could be kind of important. That's, that'll have to be figured out. We're not gonna have an IO shield, but uh, the other one didn't have one anyway. That doesn't really matter. In terms of the plugs and connectors on this board, it's not really that standard. You're really not meant to put this in an alternative enclosure. Let's try to do it anyway. Let's get rid of this. Well, at least the screw holes line up. That is a positive thing. Less positive, I have an entire list of problems to go through, starting with the CPU cooler, which used to screw into the Optiplex case. Solution? Random nuts that I found. They happen to fit the screws for the CPU cooler. And yeah, I think that'll work just fine. Moving on to the rest of the cooling, I wanted to keep the original Optiplex fan so the computer wouldn't know that it was gone. The problem with this was that the fan wires were very short, so I added more wire in the middle so that the cable would reach from the back of the computer all the way to the fan header on the motherboard. And then at the front, I just added a fan that could be powered by Molex, and that solves the cooling issues. Next, this is the power button that used to turn the computer on. 
Yeah, I just kind of cut this apart and stuck the wires into the plugs for the case, and that seemed like it was going to be good enough. That seems fine. And we'll just switch those over, and remember the power supply that I said seems sketchy and like I shouldn't trust it? We're, we're just gonna put that right back where it came from. Along with $6, definitely not a fire hazard AliExpress power adapter. This converts the regular ATX power into the little plug that fits this special Dell motherboard. And then the Thermaltake Tough Power has a bunch of extra cables that should be plenty to power all of our hard drives. Speaking of hard drives, I then stood directly in front of the camera while I filmed installing these, but yeah, it, it's not too complicated, I just put them in the computer. Some of them are even screwed in. Now, I know what you're thinking, shouldn't all of the hard drives be screwed in? And to that I say, remember last time when there was literally electrical tape holding all of them in a bundle? We're doing pretty good for this channel, take the wins you can get. All right, list of problems concluded, no more issues. Let's pull out the skip fratty and see if this thing turns on. And yes, indeed, it does actually turn on. A few finishing touches, I stuck another fan in the front, which I'm sure helps a lot when the hard drives have no clearance in between them. Probably don't do that to your server. But hey, it's fine. This is still way less sketchy than the laptop NAS and probably slightly less sketchy than the other one. You would think that after doing four entire network attached storage videos, I would have made one that was useful by now. Maybe this will be it. So then, this is the finished server. I do legitimately only have one side panel for this case, but it does fit on both sides. So I figured I'd cover up the important side and the back can just be whatever. You don't need side panels when you've got a Windows Vista sticker prominently displayed showing how good your computer is. Ignore the dents in the top of the case, I temporarily used it to hold up a transfer case from a Toyota pickup truck. Don't worry about that, I think it's time to figure out some software. True Naz! First things first, we need to come up with a host name for this. Think of some of its defining features. I think it has to be tough power. Let me put that in. I won't lie, I am slightly concerned by this string of messages about how all of the drives have uncorrectable errors, with this one being a significant amount of uncorrectable errors. You know, I'm starting to believe that maybe these hard drives should not be used anymore. They have been through a lot. I think I'm just going to ignore that for now. Let's configure our storage pools. There's all of our unassigned disks. I'm going to be making one pool with the one terabyte drives and a separate pool for the 500 gig drives. And both of these are going to use RAID Z2 for two drives worth of redundancy across each set of eight drives. On the one terabyte drives, that comes out to a usable capacity of 5.4 Tibby bytes and on the 500 gig drives, 2.73 Tibby bytes. Yes, the contents of all added disks will be erased. I just installed this software that's supposed to make it really easy to monitor what's going on with all of your drives, and it doesn't like a lot of them. Let's click through on some of these. What are you complaining about? Command timeout. The count of aborted operations due to HD timeout, normally this attribute should be equal to zero. I don't know if that's a problem or not. We're going to ignore it. Pending an uncorrectable sector count on this drive, I'm pretty sure those ones are, are pretty serious indicators of potential failure. D don't worry about it. What's this one? Uncorrectable errors. That seems very general. Yeah, some of these are not looking too good. If you haven't watched all of my previous videos, I'll give you a quick recap on where these things came from. A good portion of them came from this just box I bought off Facebook Marketplace. It had like 50 drives in it. I bought them all at once. Four of the 500 gig drives were out of all of those Optiplexes I bought. And then a bunch more were out of a server that I had personally deployed for like four years straight after they were already in computers previous to that. None of these hard drives are new. There's a reason that this will just be one of the places this data is stored, not the only place it's stored. It's, it's a little questionable. We're gonna just roll with it. There really is a wide variety here. The shortest running drive in this thing has only been on for 54 days, 
with the longest running drive, seven years and three months of continuous power on time. Part of this server is just going to be an experiment of how much longer these hard drives can possibly last, much like the last project was. I've created SMB shares for both of my pools, and if I go to my file explorer, they are both accessible over the network. Everything seems to be working exactly as I'd expect. I've started transferring about three terabytes of data to this server. Now, it only has a gigabit connection, so that will take nine hours, but it seems to be working just fine. You can see on the web interface, that data is coming in at 850 megabits per second, as much as you could hope for. Example of server doing server stuff. Here is a folder currently hosted on that server, and I can play a video file out of here. Absolutely no issues with that. And I think that will conclude building this storage server. It's a lot of hard drives in a massive case for not that much storage because they're all very old and low capacity drives. More than anything, it's just gonna be interesting to see how long this thing lasts. If something goes catastrophically wrong, I will keep you updated. What do you think will happen first? All of the hard drives die because they're old or the tough power explodes and burns up the motherboard. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Only time will really tell there. So get subscribed in case there's future updates about this thing. Thank you for watching and come back next week. Until next time. Bye.